crisis. What are we to do? We need to acquire a dominant masculine presence. Now available on Amazon, masculinity is in crisis. Men's masculine behaviors and traits have been suppressed by popular culture. Why has it become so popular to shame, guilt, insult, masculinity, and masculine behaviors? After 50 to 70 years of this has resulted in a very large subset of men who have become weak, useless, and crisis. Pathetic state for boys and men that leads to depression and violent despair. A dominant masculine presence addresses this very dilemma for the individual man and it firmly establishes why this is what is desperately needed by the individual man today. In this book, clearly defined masculine traits and behaviors and the emotional durability provided by traditional masculinity are presented as a guide to what every man should embed into his identity. Putting these principles and behaviors into practice will motivate and direct your path step to step to create for yourself an authentic dominant masculine presence. Until then, what do you say, Thor? Do you vouch for me and my coaching? What do you, what do you say? Master passport, bro. For sure, man. I, I'll tell you how I vouch for it. I have this book right here, and in chapter four, I quote from the master himself. Shall I read it? It states, yeah. the most important factors in a man's life determines his success are money, muscles, game, and frame. Jonathan Hogwood. Yes, sir. There you go. Sure. <laughs> you know, um, I'm, I'm just out here putting one foot in front of the other, doing my best possible thing for, uh, for the guys out there. Four and a half years strong. Yeah. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Lives change. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good at what I do. Yep. And I'm proud of the results. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. You've been a big part of that, Thor. You've been a huge part of that. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that opportunity. You kind of took you, you kind of uh, convinced me to do that early on, and I appreciate it. I wasn't looking for it, and here I am. It's uh, it's are. pretty amazing. It inspired me to, you know, you inspired me to take three years and really delve into this. Really based on, there was some components that I thought I saw that nobody else saw. Now, you saw the money, muscles, and game originally. And then we concluded with frame. That was really important. Wrapped it all in there. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking, you know, there's this. there was this whole movement just before you came up with that, which I think is super important because it's like the formula that Einstein came up with. It's just simple, it's little, and it works. Mm -hmm. But there was a bigger picture I was thinking of because, you know, Vox Day had come up with the alpha, beta, delta, gamma, the secret kings. And then we got this rash of sigma videos, right? And I started doing some research on that when I was putting this book together. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized that alpha and beta is, is kind of useful for describing certain things, John. Mm -hmm. But it's not complete. I believe it's quite incomplete. It's useful for certain details. But mm. I think there's something much greater. You know how we'll describe men as alpha? Yeah. We'll describe them as beta. It's kind of yeah. useful. But I realized when I did the research that where it had come from was wolf studies. I'm sure you're aware of that going to uh, being a psychology major. Um, and uh, the guy that did them reconducted the studies in the wild because all of these wolves were in captivity. Interestingly enough, right? And when he redid the studies, the, the way he had laid out the alpha, beta, uh sexual hierarchy within the wolf pack didn't hold up in the wild isn't that crazy mm -hmm. so i started looking around and, and and i realized that a lot of us would like characterize a man like jeff bezos as a beta mm -hmm. or elon musk as a beta that's what we would say right right but there's something more to it because we can't just do that i mean how do we do that and so when i was trying to process there's there was something much bigger and, and you felt this before, too. Women would always say, what attracts you about a man? And they would say, the vibe, the vibe. Well, what is this strange vibe? I believe it to be a dominant masculine presence. And I will say that Jeff Bezos and guys like Elon Musk have that in spades. Well, how do, you, how do I describe it? I describe it with seven skills of a dominant masculine presence. Hmm. That's how I do it. These men express skills at an above average level that really encompasses a man's life in total. And, and it explains why a fat, ugly guy with some money and the ability to use power as an in influence 
can be so successful, even with women. It goes mm-hmm. beyond that. And that kind of solves the black pill problem. So that's kind of where I went with the book and did some work on that. Um, so what do you think about the vibe? I mean, you hear that from girls all the time, you know, and you felt it yourself, right? Being a guy that has that vibe and mm. worked on it so hard. I mean, you've got there through money, muscles, game of frame, which I think is one, the best way to go, actually. But Thank what's you. the next level? Well, you know, um, you know, I, I, as I'm getting older and, and maturing and learning as a coach, a teacher, a leader, and, uh, you know, influence to these young men, you know, it's funny, like for me, I, I constantly think that I always need to do better. I think that even now I, I analyze myself and I think like, you know, do I have character flaws that I'm unaware of? Am I coming off in a certain way that is detestable to some people? It, like, you know, there there's a lot of self-reflection that happens, I believe, when you're a leader. Yep. Um, and I definitely believe that the vibe is something that is super important because all that really translates this to is like how you make people feel. That's really what it boils down to. That's so true. And and I, I, I like to, I have a chapter on that exactly where I talk about, you know, self-reflection does result in leadership. And I, the, the best form that I can say that suits masculinity is transformational leadership. And it starts with yourself. You just came off of an inner game uh, seminar that spoke specifically to doing that and acquiring that and clearing your head, getting that transformational leadership. It's been super popular in the last well, I don't know, 30 years to do this thing called servant leadership. It's been promoted in corporations. Mm-hmm. Guys, that is a very feminine way. And I break that down in the book, but, you know, making people feel a certain way is super, super important. And how do you do that? Mm-hmm. I spell that out with one of the skills. There are seven skills that I lay out in the book. One of them I call power. Mm-hmm. Now, now power, you might think, is something very different. But what it is, it's the ability by force of will, John, to shape reality to benefit, uh, to to your benefit or the benefit of others. And it's best expressed in influence and respect to get the things done that need to get done and done fast. Hmm. Power is best utilized when you have the power over your own life and the direction that it's leading to. And then I go into why you'd want to be above average of that skill, what exercise it would take to get into that skill. So out of those seven skills, if you can just get above average in three, you're going to be up there 85%, uh, beat 85% of all men out there. If you can do four, now you're into that upper 10% range. If you could do five of the seven, now we're talking you're up there with the Elon Musks and the rest. So what are these skills? Let's talk about it. Let's, uh, before we jump into that, I, I want to yeah. just, I want to set the tone real quick because, Please. you know. Uh, are are you okay with uh, talk about how old you are? Sure. Yeah. How old are you now? I'm 60 years old real quickly to be 61. How about that? Let's just yeah. say weeks. Or and, or I mean, you're, you're in better shape than literally 90% of all people out there. You're 60 years old. You're, I mean, in my opinion, you easily check all four boxes, money, muscles, game frame. And, um, you've seen, what's happened to america and more importantly what's happened to the men of america what what year were you born in sorry i'm 63 63 so i actually have a video here that i wanted to play real quick and this is a youth fitness video from la sierra high school in 1962 that shows the high school boys and their daily physical fitness regimen. I'm going to play it real quick, and then I would like to get your feedback, and I'd like to show the audience of what used to be. Take a quick look here with us, guys. A California high school has the well-nigh perfect answer to the president's call for physical fitness. Stan Laprati, physical education director at La Sierra High School, has developed a program that assures every student of physical excellence. 
exercise on the grip swing puts muscles on the least athletic. Extension push-ups are among the toughest of the drills. As an incentive to excel, the color of the shorts the boys wear is determined by their ratings on performance charts. Mm. Some requirements for top ratings are stricter than for Annapolis Cleves. A lad who has mastered the pegboard will find a military obstacle course a snap. 200 schools across the country have adopted La Sierra's program of 15-minute daily competitive exercise. On a hot day, they wet down the wrestling mats for sliding. The boys at La Sierra are learning that it's not only good sense to get toughened up, it's fun. Not only good sense to get toughened up, but good fun. Yep. Merit but, that fits a man's natural instincts. Merit is the natural pecking order for men. Real JFK's in the house, and he says, back when I was in office, you know. <laughs> You know, a big part of that's those muscles becoming physically fit is so key. You know, we've had arguments or not really arguments. We've had debates back and forth. What's more important, frame, muscles, money, game, you know, which is the priority. Mm -hmm. If you think going back to your mother's womb and you came out, you need mo nothing more than the ability to move at that point. Right. Yeah. So, you know, muscles is up there because I found with a lot of men. They even struggle with getting frame. And I, I kind of go over this in my book and I call it from um, the outside in. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're working on your outside, your muscles, your movement, because it creates discipline that you can directly transfer into your inner game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I do realize that, you know, a, a lot of people just, I don't know this it's just it's amazing to see where men are right now you know compared oh, we, we fell in off a cliff that, isn't, it, yeah. isn't that crazy it really is and it's the culmination this is going to sound real conspiracy but you you know not you and i are shadow banned anyway so <laughs> exactly i mean you're fully aware of where our modern education system came from it was the prussian model to create workers it was to create workers for the factories in the Industrial Revolution. John Rockefeller came out in the early part of the last century and said, I don't need thinkers in this nation. I need workers. And he meant it. He hired the very first guy that put the National School Board together. And they didn't need doctors, lawyers. They had enough of those. And they needed workers. And yeah. they admitted it. And they used that Prussian model, which used operant conditioning formed by the famous psychologist B.F. Skinner and Pavlov, and they conditioned people for becoming basically mindless factory workers. And yeah. so while we kept merit because that was a big part of masculinity and our traditions and our conventional masculinity, what's happened over time is really, you know, Marxism really lends itself towards that model. And that makes everybody equal. You knock all the pegs that are sticking up down with a hammer. Hmm. And you pick the broken ones up to the same level as the ones you smash down. Hmm. You get uniformity. You come out of that with egalitarianism. And you come out of that with men that are basically, you know, broken men that are essentially women as hmm. far as how they behave, their emotionality. And then you come up with women that are essentially broken men with flawed masculinity. You know, look hmm. at, we got what? 60, 70% of the debts carried by women. So is the consumer spending. They've become uh, cube slaves just in the last 50 years. What are they complaining about now? As soon as they hit 35 and childless, they are literally halfway through their lives. They are mid, they're at midlife at 35. It is, gen, it is called a geriatric pregnancy and only 17% can get pregnant but you know what that's just enough for the masses in the media because now they can use the apex fallacy against them if 17 percent can get pregnant they'll all believe that they're the exception because we trained them in school yeah and then you get a demographic crash yeah and uh and again i want to guys and just so you know at home uh we are not trying to be doom and gloom we're not trying to be negative we're not trying to uh disenfranchise you but I would assume 
the majority of you watching are a man. Go ahead, put a one in the chat if you're an actual biological male watching us right now. Put a two if you're a woman. I just want to know how many women are watching. But um, the reason is this, because objectively, there seems to be a non-optimal environment for men right now. And Thor and I are dedicating our lives to helping as many men to get to where they want to be in life. And a big part of this is taking accountability for yourself, understanding that this is your life, this is your doing, and if you want to make the change, you can. If you don't want to make a change and you want to just watch, that's okay too. We're not here to hold anybody's hand or cheerlead anybody. But we do have to understand that there is an objective problem with the water supply, with the food supply, with the propaganda that's being pumped out every single day. And we here want to educate you so you can be the strongest version of yourself as possible. As for myself, I was raised in a single mother household, which was absolute total fucking nightmare. Physically abused, emotionally abused, mentally abused, you name it. And I was able to claw myself out of that into the upper echelons of success in multiple avenues. Money Muscles Game Frame. And I know what it's like to be in hell. And I know what it's like to be in heaven. And we want to bring you guys all up to heaven with us. I mean, Thor was literally, I mean, living up to his name, he was shocked with over 10,000 volts. 12,000 volts. That's great. 12,000 12, volts to be precise. Fried this man's hands, almost killed him. When you got shocked, mm -hmm. did you, you were shocked and you fell down as well? Uh, well, I did go down, but I was in an underground vault and I plugged a grounded component onto a 12,000 volt junction because I was in a hurry and I had severe head up ass syndrome at the time, which most young men do, uh, thinking they know everything and it nearly cost me my life. It shredded the skin off my hands and my face uh, in a pretty serious way, you know, pretty serious. I was in the hospital for 27 days. I spent four years on reconstructive surgery so that my hands look relatively normal. And, uh, you know, I got a facelift the hard way. Actually, yeah. you know what they did? They stripped the skin off my legs to go onto my hands, and they stripped some skin off of my ass to go on my face. So legally, I can now talk shit because they put my butt skin around my face to <laughs> make a color match, you know? <laughs> One of the few men who can legally talk shit. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know? hey, I did want to mention one thing here. Mm -hmm. What you say about the men is the biggest thing that attracted me to you was your vision. Well, and your vision, that. the vision to help men, because there, I didn't realize at the time I was seeing it with the apprentices that I had in their personal lives. And that's one of the things that attracted me to working with you was being able to transition later in life and continue to mentor. Mm -hmm. But what I was seeing here is that men, when they go through the education system and listen to the propaganda, they're stuck in this circular thinking of emotion where they can't take action. They talk themselves out of the action. Mm -hmm. There's reasons they can't. They have toxic shame. They have all these things that have been built upon them for the strict purpose, essentially, of keeping them in a prison of their mind. Yeah. And one of the things I talk about is action is everything. Action is everything a man needs to become everything he ever wanted to become right wrong or different if you take an action taking an action is better than no action you'll have propaganda that goes out there well not taking action is an action well that is bullshit yeah you must take an action yeah I, I, a thousand percent i mean you know I, I the thing is this because when you take action that's the only way to get data upon your action and if you're if the action you have taken is providing what you want or is providing what you don't what you don't want and if it does if it provides what you don't want at least you know okay this action is giving me what i don't want therefore i do not need to do this action anymore and you do you know slowly deduce your way towards solving your problem so i think that taking action is 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 a crucial component and masculinity and i think that there is indeed a masculinity crisis right now and um you know with well, the, APA, the apa which is the american psychological association has deemed normal uh normal normal masculine traits and behaviors as toxic mm. 
and they are they have geared programs to treat men for these toxic behaviors that are naturally inside of them you know that's pretty that's pretty shaking to the core that's that's hardcore it really is that's that's basically beating the man out of the boy i mean there are multiple reasons why mm -hmm. i did what i did very very smart you need to see the world you know i was very fortunate i graduated at 16 and spent three and a half months in europe mm. as a 16 year old mm. i got some stories i ran out of money two weeks out <laughs> shit it's nothing nothing quite as exciting as running out of money two weeks from your flight uh, you get homesick really quick and oh by the way there was no internet so to contact anybody was through western union and that was going to be a difficult one yeah <laughs> yeah i can imagine well listen we got today's long list of things seven things masculine men could do and then here's another thing too because i i i, I you know, I see a lot of these young kids and, you know, I'm going to be 38 in December. So I got a little, I got a little fucking clout in the life game now. Mm. I've, done, I've done a little bit in my life. What would you say, Thor? I've been okay. Oh yeah. You're level three now. <laughs> Coming up on level four. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but I see a lot of these young guys and they gravitate towards, um, younger guys for advice. And, if you don't know anything about life, you know that like the best advice is not going to be from your peers. It's going to be from people older than you who have more experience than you who are actually in the positions that you want to be, you know, because I see a lot of these kids watching shit like, you know, I show speed and like all these like fucking reaction streamers and oh, really yeah. nothing, nothing really beneficial in this content. Mm -hmm. Um you know, like an example, like Brandon Carter has like a million subscribers on mm -hmm. YouTube, has a million subscribers on Instagram. His live streams on how to like level up and be a better man, I think like they max out at like 400 live viewers. Mm -hmm. Perhaps so that, that for me blows my mind. Yes. Because I had a call with him. I had a private coaching call with him this week. We talked for two hours. I felt like I got two years of education from that man. Yep. And I was just so humbled because he was just so so you went what do you think the cause is that he's got 400 live viewers i think i know i just think most i think you know to be honest with you i just think most people aside from the logarithm i just think most people are they don't care i just think most men don't give a shit they don't want to level up because it's hard because the number one thing you have to do it's to hard. level up as a man yep. as, as a human is you got to look yourself in the mirror and be like okay I, I'm not good enough to get what I want, given my skill set at the moment right now. You know, like what I'm doing is not enough. Like I don't have the life that I want because I don't have the information that I need to get what I want. And a lot of people too don't realize that it takes time. A lot of people don't want to put the time in. You know, what about you? What do you think? It's about? a huge mountain to overcome because nobody's been taught delayed satisfaction. It's everything is now. You can have everything you want now. We teach our girls that too. You can have it all and eat your cake too. And you can have it, by the way, right now. And we've taught young men this too. And we reinforce it with the this imperial probe droid that sits on our hip called a smartphone. And it gives you a dopamine hit. That's a strong, powerful drug. It's instantaneous. That takes no effort, really. It takes no effort at all. In fact, there'll be some point where I can just think and get that dopamine hit. And then we'll be wireheads. So... The really interesting thing here is that what Brandon is talking about is essentially all of it is action and it will be delayed while there'll be larger amounts of fulfillment, that immediate gratification of that hit is a momentary happiness. It's a proximate goal and you can get that so quick. It's so easy everywhere. That's what the logarithm promotes. That's why he has 400. I think that most are not even aware except those that do become aware realize the work is hard and it might not be worth it because it's easier everywhere else. And that's why they're going to these young guys too, because they're basically supplying them with a dopamine hit. Yeah. Dopamine that's my theory. theory. No, you're, you're spot on. You're, you're a thousand percent spot on. And you know, um, I just think that 
it, it's it's also because uh, Ryan Fowler talks about this too. Mm. Mm-hmm. He talks about inner game is like you you have to um you have to look at yourself in the mirror and and face the parts of you that you don't want to face that that need to know like if you know like a lot of people like i like i you know we we, we both know harry right harry's oh sure i love harry with all my heart Mm -hmm. and um he's a great friend and like at one point when we were you know in the initial areas of our coaching i was like hey i was like harry you fucking fat bro you are fat motherfucker you are fat you are fat and short like you're shorter than me and you're you're way more and he said he went home and you know I said it in like a kind of mean way. I was like, Harry, you didn't take the red pill. You took the pig pill. <laughs> I told him like you're fucking fat. Yeah. Harry from that moment had a honest moment with himself. He lost 60 pounds. He sure did. His income went through the roof. And now he has a beautiful feminine smoke show of a woman who I've met personally. So feminine. She's she. We both stayed in the same Airbnb building in in Miami. She was cooking for us. She was cleaning the kitchen when she was done. You know, I was financing everything. We we were doing the man ship, and she was doing the feminine ship. And and Harry is so happy, and he's in such a good place now. But it all starts with facing that pain, facing that uncomfortable reality. That's so ironic because you're in Japan. It reminds me of that old Japanese maxim. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. And that's what happened to Harry. Yeah. You know, and that's just, uh, that's just a lot of things that I think it's just painful. And then we could go into the whole thing, the single mother epidemic, um, Mm. you know, single mothers literally raise whores and criminals. Mm -hmm. And when you look at single fathers, the, the, it's just like, they're almost as good as a two parent household, you know? Yeah. yeah. So something else you want to get into the seven skills? Cause I think this is critical, seven guys. Skills. We, we, I think we laid it on pretty thick. Let us know if you are, you're still there with us in the chat. If you guys got any questions, send a super chat. All the money goes to reinvesting into the platform and growing the muscle money muscles game frame message and helping out Thor as well. Go ahead, Thor. Let's talk about it. You want to go no one worries. by one? I'm, I'm going to go through these initially, and then I'm going to use an example that you're going to associate with pretty cool. Okay. So these seven skills are really the answer beyond the alpha, the beta, the gamma, the omega, the secret king, because they don't really apply. They're useful in certain descriptors when we're talking and trying to understand the truth, but they're not complete. I believe these are complete. This is the seven skills of a dominant masculine presence. Here's what they are. Physicality, psychology presence problem solving prosperity power and passion physicality is just like it sounds it's your ability to be physical and function to an above average level this does not mean that you must become a bodybuilder just that you have to maximize your physical capabilities potential no matter what challenges placed upon you without complaint That should be pretty powerful to you. And if you can do that, you'll see why that's so important. Even if you're stuck in a wheelchair, you can still accomplish that physicality. It goes beyond your body. I even talk about that in the book a little bit about that heart mind coherence pattern that you can create. Mm -hmm. Then psychology. Psychology is a mindset, an attitude, mental competence, social competence, emotional durability or regulation. Your inner game and understanding of male-female intersectional dynamics is a must here. Mm -hmm. This is going to carry you a long way from interacting with other people. Presence is your ability to be in the moment and command the space around you with authority, congruence, boundaries, grace, manners, expectations, and competence. Mm -hmm. This also speaks to your ability to engage socially and create social network of friends, acquaintances that you bring mutual value to at any moment in time. Problem solving, which I believe is actually a man's primary agency in life. Where a woman's is her sexuality, a man's is his problem solving skill. Hmm. Problem solving is about learning, seeing solutions, possibilities, and probabilities. Just as important, if not more, the ability to zoom your focus in and out to see the big picture or different detached view of problems at hand. 
The better you get at this, the faster you solve problems in all areas of your own life and when helping solve problems for others. This creates immense value for you and for others. Prosperity is all about the abundance at all levels in your life. Acquiring resources to meet all of your needs and those of others. Prosperity includes leadership and abundance behaviors while uh, fearlessly embracing all issues of your inherent prosperity mindset so you can pay it forward to others and yourself. Interesting. And now power. Power is often misunderstood, but power in this concept context is the ability by force of will to shape reality to benefit to your benefit or that of others. This is best expressed as influence and respect to get things done and done fast. Power is best utilized when you have power over your own life and the direction that it is leading to. And then, of course, we wrap it with passion. Passion is the drive and the love of what is ahead for you in reality or imagination. And it is the possibility of being alive every moment as if it's all brand new. In many ways, life is brand new every moment of every day we have. Everything that we do now, we do to appreciate that is a reality. And you can get through any difficulty, no matter how large, with passion. So mm -hmm. those, are the, those are the seven. Now imagine this as an example. Imagine you have physicality. Psych, uh, uh, you have just above average in physicality. You have above average in psychology. And you have above average in problem solving. And maybe a little bit in prosperity and power. What do you end up with? Someone like Brandon Carter, right? He's mm -hmm. definitely above average in those. Yeah. So now you would look at somebody else and you'd say, okay, well, I don't have the physicality, but I have problem solving. I have power and I have passion. Wow. That describes a whole lot of politicians that are successful. They have a dominant masculine presence and you cannot deny that. Um, then you could describe somebody who does have the physicality. They might have the presence and they might have uh, power and prosperity. Like MLD, <laughs> you know, you're having these dominant masculine presence. And the interesting thing is when you get above average in these, it's something that's well known. You express it in your body language, which I talk about. You're able to take up space without being a douchebag. You're able to project this without disclosing it. And I talk a lot about that because discovery is more important than disclosure. When you have these things, you may be very powerful and very rich. But if you don't disclose it, you're going to be smart enough to let people discover it. You are so much more valuable and the mystery is incredible. This works with both men and women. And this plays right into power. Your influence grows and grows. And you could, that it's not that you're using people. It's that you have a mutual benefit from power and the ability to use influence. So these are the seven primary skills of a dominant masculine presence. And I go through several chapters on how you apply that with leadership and how it's applied through body language as well as techniques to do that. Last part of the book, I talk about emotional uh, regulation and control that fits these very, very well so that you never get rattled. Uh, and then that's, that's what I wrap the book up with a bunch of stories about people in history that have expressed this. Hmm. And when you can conquer some of these yourselves and you only maybe need one or two that you focus on at once, it's like eating the elephant. You're just going to do it one bite at a time and you will see results. I always start everybody with the outside in and that's physicality because it's something that starts to bolster the mind. Yeah. I think you've seen that too. If you start too hard on the mental aspect, they can get kind of vapor locked. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Justin Waller says the same thing. He says that start with physical fitness, make sure you're, you're fit, tip top physical shape. And then from there, work on other aspects of your life. And I do think that it is a direct correlation to, ironically, what's going on mentally. A, a, a person's body is a representation of what's going on up here mentally, right? So, um, you know, this is why, you know, a, a friend of mine, he told me, his, his, you know, David Bond, he says, like, he yeah. just really has a hard time working with really, really fat people. He thinks, <laughs> like, really, really, uh, you know, like, obviously doesn't deal with fat women, um, but, like, somebody who's, like, you know, morbidly obese, like, what's going on up here? Like, something is going on, you know? 
Um, you're, it you're, is possible because it's more probable. Right, 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 right. You know, and uh, you know, there's like big like Samoan guys out there. I'm not talking like these big hulking mass men, but I'm thinking, you know, I think there's is a direct representation. And um, when you see somebody who is physically fit, you also like. Okay, this guy clearly is a hardworking, disciplined guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You you can't derive anything other than that. I mean, in, in right. the, the most common thing people say, like, "Oh, that guy's on steroids." Like the steroids, you don't just <laughs> inject steroids and become a superhero. <laughs> like, I, I wish it was that easy, because then everybody would be on steroids. But it's not the case whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I think that. I think a big problem with a lot of people right now in today's society is a lot of people are mentally enslaved up here. Yes. They're not, they're not present. They're not, they're, they're, they're too, you know, they're too busy here and their yeah. little, little dopamine machine. See, I, even me, I turned mm -hmm. my, I turned it to black and white to make it uh, mm. less, less addictive. You okay. Know? You can pro you can program your phone and it's amazing. Like when I put it back on, just quick little thing. When I put it back on to color mode, I'm like, is this like set to like maximum colors? Like well, this shit is vivid as fuck. <laughs> and that's why all these terrible foods are so bright colors. Cause we're dirty stinking apes at the end of the day. We're just monkeys, right? Pretty and much. the 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 pr like for example, Pringles, right? The Pringles sour cream and onion can bright green the pringles regular can bright red the starburst right like little packets of sh cancer food that you eat like literally what cancer cells feed off of sugar yep. bright pink bright yellow bright red bright blue you know what i mean yeah All not to be not to be doom and gloom but this plays right into what we were talking about early is when you were a child and you're coming upon adolescence these simple colors these simple things are attractive because they're brand new to you they are dumbing us down with that conditioning and keeping essentially the entire population at a preteen level of emotional stability. Why? Because when you're like that, you spend money to satisfy that proximate goal of happiness. Yeah, this is why the debt's happening. And we're in this end of the cycle. It's going to be real difficult to get out of. But the real way we'll get out of it, where is no asteroid? We don't have to wait for that. The pendulum's not going to swing. We're going to get into a demographic crash. And when the grid starts to go down, they're going to have some suffering because it's going to take a while to get, you know, our minds around it and really get back through that. Did you know, John, that just in the last, you know, 30, 40 years, I mean, the evidence of young men as far as their ability to live long, for instance, a 20 or 30 year old man can, can apply now today, 98 pounds of force when they're gripping something with their right hand, hmm. you know, uh, 35 years ago, they did 117 pounds of force. At least for males, it is one of the best predictors of mortality later in life. Grip strength, yeah? I got one of That's these on correct. the <laughs> Now, it seems strange because, you know, with all the porn and all the OnlyFans girls, you think they would get one hell of a grip strength on that right hand, right? <laughs> Not the case. It's going down. Why? What's uh, actually yeah. happening? <laughs> but that's not the only thing. There's two other lifts we're going down in. Really bad as far as strength is concerned. I mean, you opened with that fitness thing. Hmm. Uh, men's average bench press strength today is 187 pounds. That's a per, you know, for one solid rep, 187 pounds. 30 years ago, it was 215. For the I squat, did. it was 225 compared with 277 35 years ago. 187. I I doubt the yes, average man. I doubt the average guy could press that. It's the one time effort. Average man, eighteen to thirty five years old, thirty four years old. I highly doubt that, just because I see these dudes. You know that this is a six year old study, <laughs> but. That's significant, and then the grip strength really blows me away. But you know, because that one, that one's usually something that people retain for a very long time. But you know, we can get into it. But that's the loss of testosterone, endocrine endocrine system disruptors, all those sort of things. You know, hmm. uh, good play factors, good play factors. Very, very much weaker than our dads were, which really plays into the difficulties we're facing too. I mean. We've we've got hoflation, which means that, you know, even being a better man, twice the man my grandfather was, I still have 10 times harder the task to get the same woman. Yeah. 
So yeah. in America. In America. <laughs> but I will counter unless you get a dominant masculine presence. Because even the strictest of feminist commie Marxist women will melt to a dominant masculine presence. Why? They all say they don't need a man, but they want a man. And as soon as they get a man that, that fits that bill and gives the good D and has that about him, like a Jay Waller, what happens to him? Oh, all the rest of that stuff's out of the window and they start mirroring. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, uh, I, I just think that right you now, it is just, we, we are in a crisis right now. Yeah. Uh, but, the good thing is this, and you know, Dana White has famously said this. He just did an interview with Piers Morgan, but he did another um he did another situation with uh some other smaller podcast, but he was like, he's like, if you even have this much savage in you nowadays, if you've just got this much savage, you could have whatever you fucking want. You yeah. can have whatever you want. Cause the majority of these fucking pussies, they hide behind this right here. Mm -hmm. they are they are keyboard warriors and we've seen a lot of these internet personalities and people who talk shit here mm -hmm. and the reality comes knocking at the front door we see them roll up roll over and show their bellies with the quickness so let this be uh, a, a a great message to you guys at home too because i want to tell you guys something so right now, uh, between all the platforms, we've got like a little over 100 people watching. No, let's see, 90, at the Zits right moment, 92. But if this was like, oh, some woman is a fucking whore. Here's why. Ra 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 ra. They're all running in here. But it's like, here's what you got to do to stop being fat. Here's what you got to do to stop being ignored by every girl in your life. Here's what you do to stop being ghosted. Here's what you do to become better no it, it's it, it's just i and you know what they, they don't want to do it but you know what i think it is too even in the bible jesus was talking about it right yeah. he said the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few there's endless abundance out there for all men who want it for those guys who want to make a big change in their life who want girlfriends who want money who want money muscles game frame there is abundance out there for all the men who want to do the work, but you have to do the work. That's the biggest thing. It is work. You have to take action. You have to take action. Yeah. It's, it's irrefutable. And if you don't, you're going to be working for a guy who does take action. You're going to be, you're going to be taking orders from somebody, you yep. know? That's true, you know, definitely. And you know what? If I, if I was to say, guys out there, understand what masculinity is in the conventional sense. I put a list together of masculine traits that are tried and true, conventional. Some would call it traditional, but I will say this. Traditional for one culture is different from the other. So I tried to stick to conventional. That crosses all cultures. Mm -hmm. Understand what that means. It's like honor, strength, self-discipline, discipline, mastery. Ownership, conquest, emotional regulation, foresight, respect, ambition, aggression, capability for violence. There's many, many, many more. Understand what that is. If you're interested in the females, understand what feminine traits are. Fit, friendly, affection, sympathy, polite, pleasant, accommodating, peaceful, agreeable, conscientious, nurturing, cooperative, and has deference you know, etiquette and decorum. Those are important things. You got a lot of that in Japan, actually, you know, even though, you know, they have a high, I mean, there's a, a lot of young, beautiful women out there. They have respect for the most part. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, exactly. And they have prompt timeliness. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a critical loss in today's people is just being prompt and timely, keeping your word Punctual. Punctual things exactly. for both men and women. That's one that crosses both lines. Right. You know what? I mean, can I just can I yeah. vent for something real quick? It's me. Okay. I think that people who ghost or <laughs> block you in any sense are absolutely disgusting human scum. Mm. If you're gonna ghost like, like if you're gonna tell somebody I'm gonna do XYZ and then you just disappear, mm -hmm. you ghost them, or, or you know, you're familiar with stonewalling, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. 
I absolutely hate those people. It, it, I know I shouldn't have hate in my heart, and I'm working on it, but I hate those motherfucking people because they are the lowest of low. They are human scum. Because, and, and, and the biggest thing for me, too, I just saw Layla Hormozzi. She posted this, and she's mm. like, she's like, the biggest revenge you can enact on your hater is already being done. And it's their personal day-to-day lives. Mm -hmm. These people who ghost people, these people who may be in a relationship with you or you may be friends, whatever, suddenly they block you or something like that. That right there, if you didn't do anything to deserve that, it it just shows no empathy, shows that you're a psychopath, you're a fucking sociopath, you're a narcissist. And if you think you can go through life and continue to treat people poorly and nastily, quite frankly – and have a good life, good luck to you. Good luck to you because that's the only fucking thing that's going to save you. Yeah. But that's just, I had to get that off my, my fucking. Oh, it fits right in with that etiquette and decorum too. There, there is a, a, one of our mutual friends says, you know, the medium is a message and blanking you like that is a per, well, we live in a cancel culture. Really? I'm going to cancel you. Some fucked up shit right there. You know, it leads to very dark places for sure. No respect, you know, and that's another one, man, a whole episode I could do on respect. I talk about because there is a level of courtesy you give everybody that is not respect. It's courtesy of you assuming you're an adult man. Everything else is earned and it's applied at different levels due to the meritocracy that's inherent in a man's masculinity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Um, and it, and it, you know, and the thing is this to like, the thing is as I would argue to say currently the state of men and state of women is probably at an all time low population wise in first world developed countries. Right. And um, if you as an individual can be a man of integrity and doing simplest things like even Jay Waller was talking about this. Yeah. Right. Showing up on time. Yep. If you say you're going to be somewhere. Show novel concept here be an adult and show up on time <laughs> yep. you know yeah you're gonna get ahead of the pack because the bar is getting lower and lower and lower i mean across the board too i talked to a young kid the other day right he's in the navy here and we met at a comedy bar good kid young chad white kid jacked you know and um he was just telling me he's like bro he's like our military is in trouble. He's yeah. like, he's like, if if we were to be attacked right now, as a nation as Americans, our military, he's like, with this whole, can't say it agenda, but we all know. Don't even type it in the chat, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, thank God yeah. we got some good robots. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. Don't make me play the song. Okay. Only if you want to. <laughs> right? Yeah. Bro. Actually, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna break the story right now. So Thor, I'm going behind enemy lines. In November. You're coming to California? Worse. Oh worse. I'm going to China. Oh, interesting. I've got a man in China who's gonna sponsor my tourist visa there. Mm-hmm. I'm going behind the Great Wall of China in November, and I'm doing investigative reporting because I'm going to see what's going on. Because China and Russia, mm-hmm. those, they are the ones fighting for the next global dominance, and America is not going to stay at the top at the current rate that they're going. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be doing a lot of reporting. It's not. It's going to be one of many trips, and um, I have a good idea of what I'm going to see. And um, <clears throat> you know, yeah. They they are really interesting too. I mean, there's a lot of facets that they're extremely diverse when you think about it. It's not a single culture. It's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know what I just learned when I was researching this book and it just relatively recently too. Were you aware of when Henry Kissinger and Nixon opened up China to free trade global that, uh, you know, Mao was still, um, alive and as part of those part of those uh discussions you know a serious offer was made in the west about the women yep they wanted to give us women yep 
they wanted to give 10 million women to Americans. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. I think it scared us. <laughs> you know? Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to go see what's going on because China understands the masculinity crisis. They do. You know that? You know it's illegal. Uh, so they're doing a couple things. One, they are putting more men in the schools to teach the children. Mm -hmm. Two, these feminized Korean celebrities and Japanese J-pop celebrities that are like yep. becoming pretty popular around the world, quite frankly, are banned from being yep. able to be on television. I am aware. I have they, a friend that from China. I am aware, yeah. Weibo is one of the most prominent blogging websites in China. They have banned all and this is this is devastating. This is devastating, but they have banned all feminist content and all LGBT content. It's totally devastating. Um this is why we got to take down China. <laughs> but uh, are we going to go to war with China and Russia because of their their stance on LGBTQ plus? Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a fight I wanted to pick. Send the women in the front line. Give them some equality. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put some uh, blue hair on our missiles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> blue hair wigs on there. Oh, hey, Kevin. Thanks, man. Yeah, Kevin Fries, MLD and Thor. Thank you for your knowledge. It has helped me become a leader in my school and build mental toughness to put in the work required to enter the University of Texas, bro. Congratulations. Let's give you a little. That was my, uh... Congratulations there, guy. Absolutely. Congrats. That was my birth state. I was born in Texas. Hey, I like it. So we, we got, uh, we got our work cut out for us, but hey, do you mind uh, if I, uh, give the chat a free gift, I'd like to post in the chat. Yeah, free audio chapter. We talked about seven masculine skills, the skills of them. I'm going to give you that chapter for free today. That right. chapter in audio is directly from the audio book, A Dominant Masculine Presence, read by myself. Uh, and uh, I want to give it to you guys. The code is free DMP. Use it. Uh, here is the link. And I just dropped it into the chat. Uh, and, and when we wrap up, I have a, a little brief a video. If you want to play that, I can throw it into the share too, you know, when we close. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll just let them, because I think you you pitched it better than that. If, if it was the video okay. sent me in Telegram. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it will be better if we, they, we okay. just pitched it this way. But guys, this is a free audio chapter of the Dominant Masculine Presence. Use the link right there, uh, redpillthor.gumroad.com. You can see it. And then use the code, free code free dmp dominant masculine presence check the book out um and then if you want if you just want to skip the line and go straight ahead uh you can just go to amazon.com and get the book it's right here red pill thor dominant masculine presence learning to cultivate your authentic self as a man and display supreme confidence and control over how you are perceived hey. self-perception is a huge thing i mean i think a lot of guys don't understand and then when your guys are done reading it go ahead and leave a five-star review perfect five-star review don't be a negative nancy and leave a four-star it was it was kind of okay okay we're <laughs> fighting a culture war and they're not playing fair at all so neither should we so go leave a five-star review on this book um you know it has 18 ratings like a, a, like you know 81 percent five-star reviews you can see it all here um you know 15 of these guys so Check it out. Even Megan, check out oh, Megan. What a sweetheart. Yeah, Megan's a good one. Yeah, she says she left a fantastic one. Uh, she wants to do some collaborations, but um, yeah, there was some really nice stuff said. So I appreciate that. I put a, a lot, three years of effort um, to try to give the guys uh, something that was really tangible. You could start at the very basics. And of course, chapter four has a big write up of money muscles game and frame before i ever press preface these skill sets because really it's the basic foundation to move into that next level to acquire a dominant masculine presence and i start with those basics body language voice how to uh, modulate your voice uh really how to listen when you're having a conversation because we just react these days we're taught to react before someone's even done speaking we're taught to grandstand John, you see this when you're being interviewed. Some of the other guests are taught to interject, interrupt, and grandstand with word salad. How much meaning is actually garnered there? A lot of a lot of your responses are very meaningful and full of wisdom, but they won't let you get there sometimes because they want to grandstand and get that dopamine hit. So I try to give uh, some positive reinforcement to how to use body language, voice pacing, 
and uh, sheer presence by taking up space uh, without being obvious. So things like that to start with, that's from the outside. As that comes inside, we work towards the emotional stability and we actually give you techniques. I'm going to give you techniques that are you know, self-hypnosis. I use the EMDR techniques. I use visualization techniques. We conquer the three major emotions that will give you the most trouble, which is a fear, anger, and sadness. If you can get a little bit of a handle on those and able to regulate those, I'm not saying not feel them, but you deal with them at your choosing. Once you do that, you will have a huge superpower that most people do not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, um, we're here for you guys. We're not going away anytime soon. And the message is going to stay clear. And it's all going to, it's only going to get clearer as we continue to refine our message for you guys out there. So give yourself a congratulations if you're out here and you are doing the work to really turn your life around. And this is a great book. And go ahead and check out Thor on his channel. Hit him Become up. Durable.com and the YouTube channel. And John, you're going to do, is there another quarter of MEN this year? Yep. December. Right on. You can see us there. December. We're cooking, we're cooking, we're cooking. All right, guys. Until then, listen, we'll be back tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come on down. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you're not getting notifications, by the way, do me a favor and go ahead and unsubscribe from some of your channels because that's how YouTube is broken. Like if you're subscribed to too many channels, you typically don't get notifications. Go ahead and do that. And we masculinity is in crisis. What are we to do? We need to acquire a dominant masculine presence now available on Amazon. Masculinity is in crisis. Men's masculine behaviors and traits have been suppressed by popular culture. Why has it become so popular to shame, guilt, insult, masculinity, and masculine behaviors? After 50 to 70 years of this has resulted in a very large subset of men who have become weak, useless, and crisis pathetic state for boys and men that leads to depression and violent despair. A dominant masculine presence addresses this very dilemma for the individual man and it firmly establishes why this is what is desperately needed by the individual man today. In this book, clearly defined masculine traits and behaviors and the emotional durability provided by traditional masculinity are presented as a guide to what every man should embed into his identity. Putting these principles and behaviors into practice will motivate and direct your path step to step to create for yourself an authentic dominant masculine presence.